Hey everybody, it's Jack with Future Pastimes, and I'm the designer of Cosmic Odyssey, the seventh expansion for Cosmic Encounter. And one of the variants that is in that expansion is the Moon variant, which adds over 80 different moons in a variety of categories. And we're going through each category of moon to talk about those moon effects. So this video is going to be focusing on secret moons. So the secret moons has got Looks like a 20-sided die moon with question marks. That's because you don't know what the effects are. Of course, you don't know what the effects are of any of these moons until you occupy them. But what's great about the secret moons is that once you have occupied a moon, you, you've landed a ship on it, and this is going to be a moon outside of your own system because you know what the moons do in your own system. But you've landed on someone else's uh, planet. You won the encounter. You diverted one of your ships to the secret moon. You're looking at the card, uh, but you do not have to reveal this effect until uh, you want to start using the effect. So the effect is not active until the moon is revealed. But once it's revealed, then it's an ongoing effect that you will get for uh, as long as you occupy that moon. And uh, for a more detailed overview of moons, there's a link in the description to uh, another video I did that just talks about moons in general. But we're going to focus on the eight specific secret moons uh and so remember that's that's this one here not the one with the one question mark those are called new moons and those what is secret is the actual type so the other moons you can see what type of moon it is all of the secret moons that we're going to talk about they uh they have the little number on the back that tells you which card to look at uh, but you know that you are landing on a secret moon when you occupy uh, that moon. So it's just its effect that is secret. So uh, we're going to do these, and, and there's eight of them. So if you're having an eight-player game, everyone can have a secret moon. If you want to divide up how the moons are done, you can do all the moons. Uh, I have a moon bag that I can put all the moons in, and we could just draw moons randomly. So you may get a mix of the new moons and the other moon types. But I do like to sometimes curate a game where I can say everyone is going to get a secret moon and maybe everyone gets another type of moon uh, as well. So let's dive in and look at what these eight moons do. So our first one is called Moon Solidarity. So uh, it's going to be secret and you can reveal it at any time. And once you do, as an ally, when you're an ally, you add the number of occupied moons to your side's total. So this is a great one to reveal Later in the game, once uh, a lot of those moons are occupied, because now you're getting a nice boost, um, and then once it's you know once it's once it's revealed, players can vacate moons if you're if they're giving you too much of a, a boost as an ally. Not that I expect them to do that, but they do have that capability. Uh, our next one is the Jebba Cloak Moon. So this one is um, has no effect. Uh, it's got little question marks there for the timing strip. It doesn't do anything. Um, it is, is what we call a worthless moon. Um, you cannot reveal this moon. This moon has no ability, but you should look pleased at having just read this. So, and there's a long history here. So, uh, Jubba Cloak is actually a Dune reference. And in the Dune board game, which is designed by the same designers that did Cosmic Encounter, Jack Kittredge, Bill Eberle, and Peter Alaka, um, the Jubba Cloak is a worthless card in Dune. It's a card that doesn't do anything. It just clogs up your hand, and and uh, you have to play it in your battle plans to get rid of it, so it's not one that you have. Now, originally, there was a moon like this in the original Eon and in the Mayfair edition, uh, but it was called Scubba Joke, not Jubba Cloak, which maybe you'll notice those rhyme. Um, but Fantasy Flight was like, what is Scubba Joke? And I tried, tried to explain... It's a it's a play on the Jubba Cloak, and they said, why don't you just do Jubba Cloak? And um, I tried to say, like, well, because traditionally it was a scuba joke, and they were just like, that make that makes no sense. So so now we have we have a, a legit dude reference in Cosmic Encounter. So there's that. Um, so yeah, this the the Jubba Cloak uh, moon doesn't do anything, um, but you need to make sure that anytime you look at a moon card, even especially if it's not the Jubba Cloak, you should look pleased at whatever you've read. And that's what's going to throw people off, hopefully. And uh, there you have it. So our next one is called Strengthen Allies, moon number three. So when you reveal it, uh, while you are an ally, allies' ships are worth double for totals, compensation, 
and rewards. Holy moly, this is a powerful moon. And it may be one that you wait. You wait until, you know, like, oh, I'm an ally and I've got four ships in the encounter. And then whoop, I'm going to reveal it to say like, yeah, I'm going to be getting eight rewards or whatever the case. And, and maybe a plus eight, you can reveal it so that you ensure that you win that encounter, especially if you're, you know, maybe not especially if there's other allies, because, you know, you don't necessarily want them getting a lot of stuff, but it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good one. Uh, and then, then it's out there. It's like, now always allies are getting that. So yikes. Um, but then we have the weakened allies moon. That's number four. So while you are an ally, allies' ships are worth half rounded down for totals, compensation, and rewards. And so, yes, you can have both of these and their effects are canceled. That's, that's the easy way to figure that out. Uh, you just, you just cancel them. If they're both occupied, then there's, there's nothing going on. And now you're like, we got to get rid of one of those moons, but which one? Yeah, that, that'll, that'll change. Number five is called hubris. So the hubris moon, uh, you do not lose your alien power from having too few home colonies. So that one, you probably don't need to reveal until you need to reveal it, right? So um, not as powerful as some of the other ones, but in certain games, especially if, you know, certain aliens attract a lot of ire. And this is a good moon for you to occupy because if they're if they're gunning for you, they're like, if we get just get rid of one more of, of that player's home colonies, then we don't have to worry about uh, the loser or the disease or the oligarch or what have you. So number six is the spoils. So while you occupy this and you have revealed it, uh, when you gain rewards as a defensive ally, double the amount you gain. So now you've got a couple, you've, you've got the spoils, and strengthen allies, uh, you could be racking them up. Now, the uh, only works for defensive defensive rewards, but um, that's, that's most of the time, that's the rewards that you're getting. So you could be really, and, and I've, I've seen a game where these are both in play, and it is, it's bananas. But that's what I love about Cosmic Encounter, is you have these situations that, they don't happen very often, very, very rarely. And that's what makes them especially memorable, but they can happen. Number seven is called stack. So this one works is at the start of each turn, you may place a card from your hand face down on top of the deck. I love this moon. It, um, it does a couple of things. It helps you manage your hand because you're shedding stuff that you don't want or need, uh, helping you maybe to get a new hand. Um, but if you time things right, the, the garbage that you're getting out of your hand is going to be going into somebody else's hand as they draw from the top of the deck. Um, and, and somebody who's really bold can put their good cards on top, making everyone think that they're putting terrible cards so that they get rewards. They don't go to the deck. They go to the reward deck. Uh, but you're just setting yourself up to draw a new hand, and then you're going to get those cards back. Uh, so that plan used to be my secret plan. Now it's out there. So I challenge you to try it out. Let me know if you pull that off. And then finally, number eight is payback. So the way payback works is after determining the outcome, if you are an ally on the losing side, you may collect compensation from either main player. So that's another nice one. A lot of these secret moons, it's all about being an ally. Uh, one of them, not good, but uh, the rest of them, pretty good. So those are the secret moons. I really like those. Um, there, there's at least one secret moon that is a new moon. Uh, and we're going to go over the new moons, uh, one of these days in, in a different video. So you'll see. Um, let me know in the comments, what do you think of secret moons? Um, there have been secret moons in, in the original and in the Mayfair edition. Um, and they said, you know, the Mayfair one is set right on there. This is a secret, do, do not reveal. They had another one, it was called Fling Fire, which is also worthless. Um, I thought one worthless moon was was enough. Uh, didn't really want to. There's so many good effects that I wanted to get in there. And even though we have over 80 moons, um, I still, you know, there were only going to be eight secret moons of the real secret category. So I think one worthless was, was plenty. So, but let me know your thoughts on that and any questions you've got about moons in the comments and any fun stories regarding the secret moons. Of course, I want to hear those. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.